Seen this blue screen before? It could be an overheating CPU. So, in line with my previous videos on blue screens, let me show you a blue screen caused by an overheating CPU. An overheating CPU could fail for a number of reasons and you might get a blue screen with these following error codes. WHEA uncorrectable error, chipset detected error, DPC watchdog timeout or even a clock watchdog timeout. There are numerous other error codes also associated with an overheating CPU. But you can guess that if the computer is running really really hot and loud, that you might be having an overheating CPU. I do not have an example of a memory dump with any of these errors because an overheating CPU is really hard to simulate. However, there are some things you can do if you ever encounter a really really hot computer generating blue screens. There are some tricks and some software you can use to try to cool the CPU down in order to test the computer. So at the end of this video, I'll show one such trick in Windows in which you can artificially make the CPU run cooler so that you can actually test and see if the blue screens are being generated by an overheating CPU. But first, let me explain why the CPU can overheat. Modern CPUs like the Intel Core processor has dynamic scaling to boost the performance of the CPU when required. This is why modern CPUs have a range of performance. There will be a base performance, for example 2 GHz, and a boost performance, for example 4 GHz, and the CPU will be able to range from 2 to 4 GHz. How the CPU boosts its performance is actually based on load. When the load of the computer hits a particular point, the CPU will increase performance to match that load. The maximum boost is determined by the thermal junction max temperature. What happens is that the thermal junction, the T junction, would measure the temperature of the CPU and when it reaches a particular temperature, it will stop the boost. Basically, the performance will start to increase until it hits the max temperature and then it will stop. Now, I am over generalizing because there are other sensors as well. There is also a T case max temperature sensor which protects the socket from overheating Basically, it checks the socket and when the temperature is the maximum, it stops the boost. But the general case is that the speed of the CPU is based on temperature. When it reaches the maximum temperature, the CPU stops boosting. If the temperature is still below the maximum, it increases performance to match the temperature of the maximum measurement that is allowed by the T junction or the T case. Unfortunately, the maximum temperature is not fixed. It is actually based on the kind of computer that you have. Intel does not actually provide a maximum temperature that is hard coded within the CPU. It depends on the kind of computer build and what the max temperature can be. This is where the confusion begins. Windows measures the CPU as a percentage, the percentage of utilization. So how does this relate to temperature? The short answer is, it does not. What happens is that when the CPU utilization goes up, when it hits 100%, the boost will start. When the boost occurs, it remains at 100% as the performance goes up. Eventually, it hits a particular temperature and it stops. But you can't see it in this graph because Windows only reports percentages. If the percentage of CPU is less than 100, then it doesn't boost, it cools it down. So that's why it can have dynamic scaling. When the utilization is less than maximum, then the speed of the CPU would be, in my case, 2.6 GHz over here. But if the utilization goes up, the speed of the CPU will go up to match it. In my example over here of this screen, the base speed is 2.6 GHz but the total speed is 4. What is happening is the cores are being boosted up. My recording software that is running on the computer right now is triggering the boost. Hence why it is 2.6 GHz. The CPU utilization seems to be low 
However, if I were to switch to the cores and processors over here, some of the processors are actually scaling upwards and they are hitting the limit. And what happens when they start hitting the limit? This graph doesn't actually draw every core. Some cores are hitting the limit, thus the total amount is being boosted. This has the potential to cause overheating. Now, in the computer that I'm using, it has very good cooling. So it will never reach a point where it will blue screen. But if the computer did not have good cooling, it is possible for the CPUs to go above the limit when it is boosted and thus cause a blue screen. So what can you do about it? Well, there are two things you can do, which I would recommend. The first is to monitor the temperature using tools. There are a few tools that I can recommend. And the second is to set a power management profile to restrict the CPU so that it doesn't boost so that you can measure the temperature when it is running at base. This gives a way to test the computer to see whether the boost is causing the overheat. The first tool I recommend is to use a tool called Open Hardware Monitor. This tool can actually show the temperature of each core and it is possible to deduce whether it's running as boosted or not. When you run the tool, what it will do is it will dump out the CPU cost performance at that time and it will write out the temperature. This will give an idea of whether it's going to overload. The CPU cores in my example can run up to 72 degrees for some of the cores and 75. As long as the temperature is below the max, then there's no risk that this computer would overheat. Some motherboards have dedicated tools which can also monitor the temperature. For example, there is the MSI tools that come with MSI computers that can monitor the temperature as well. I was unable to capture the screen of one of these tools, so I can't present it in this video. But there are some motherboard tools that have very exotic looking user interfaces that can also show the temperature of a running computer. If the temperature keeps rising and you're afraid it's going to overheat, you can restrict the CPU by adding a power manager profile. How you do that is go to control panel, go to hardware and sound, go to power options. The power options in the screen here can be edited to restrict the CPU. What you would want to do is choose the power manager that you want to edit. Click change plan settings, change advanced power settings. And what you want to search for is you want to search for processor power management. Under processor power management, there are various states over here. Just expand the drop down. And these are the states for how much the CPU can run under this um, state, the minimum state, maximum state, or when it's cooling. What you want to do is change the plug-in state to 99%. If you change this to 99% like that, and you change the maximum to also be 99% like that, yep, just press enter to save it. What will happen is now the CPU will be restricted to 99% when running that power management profile. Now, if that power management profile is active, the CPU will now be restricted. It will never boost again because if the power management profile says 99%, it never reaches 100 and it never activates the boost. This means the CPU will run at base power level. And if it keeps running at base power level, then you can test whether the CPU is going to overheat when it boosts or whether it is going to run normally at base power level. You can verify that this works by running a heavy load on the computer, watching the CPU only hit 99% and seeing whether the CPU is cool. If the CPU is cool and the hardware monitor says that the temperature is below maximum and there are no blue screens, you can probably deduce that the blue screens are being caused by an overheating CPU. Overheating is really hard to diagnose. Unless you have tools that can catch the CPU reaching the maximum, it's very hard to deduce that it is actually overheating. That's why the memory dumps of an overheating CPU is pretty obscure. But if you are getting 
a lot of memory dumps when the computer is really really hot this is something you can try restrict the cpu keep running the computer and if the blue screens go away i think it's a pretty good shot that it is the temperature that is causing the blue screens anyway let me know if you have actually seen this blue screen before or seen this symptom before i have seen this the most number of times on computers which are built for gaming gaming computers generally have very large graphic cards with a big heatsink and when the computer does not have the proper airflow the sensors of the CPU when it reaches the maximum can kind of tip over because the computer is way too hot and because the heat of the graphic card is touching the CPU, it causes a malfunction. I have seen a lot of computers that suffer overheating dramatically shut down and they might get random blue screens. Restricting the CPU and restricting the GPU using other tools can actually be used to diagnose it is quite rare for laptops from a big manufacturer to have overheating but i have seen it before in homemade gaming computers anyway let me know in the description below if you have actually seen this problem before and tell me what you did and what kind of memory dumps did you find gentle reminder to subscribe give a like and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos it's been a pleasure presenting this information i am high voice signing out